Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about how I am decluttering and downsizing my collection. This video was actually voted for by my patrons over on Patreon and they picked this from the poll and I think a lot of other people are also trying hello sunshine <laughs> are also trying to downsize at the minute and so I wanted to give my tips and tricks and how I'm thinking about it to all of you to hopefully help if you are trying to get rid of some plants as well and just don't even know where to begin this is the video for you. Before I get into it though, I wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make house plenty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my house plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is why I am thinking about downsizing my collection or decluttering. I mentioned in my goals video that this is something that I wanted to do this year. I have just over 200 plants in my collection, not including propagations. And ideally, I think I wanna get that to around 150 or so. I think that'll be slightly more manageable for myself. And basically, I think I just have too many plants. And I think it has caused me some issues in like the amount of care that I can give each of them. I have found myself neglecting some. When I've noticed pests in the past, sometimes I just completely ignore them because I like it just feels too overwhelming to deal with all of them that I just don't do anything instead, which is not the right option. <laughs> and so I think it has contributed to some of the issues I had in the last year surrounding infestations in my collection, whether it be spider mites, thrips, flat mites, whatever. I think it's just gotten a little bit too crowded. I have plants on every surface in my home, all of them, they are covered. And I feel like it's making it kind of difficult to rearrange as well. Like when I needed to put my regal somewhere else in my home outside of the cabinet, it was really difficult to find a place that I thought suited its environmental needs while still looking nice. And if I give myself a little bit more room by getting rid of some plants, then I can potentially move things about a little bit easier and it won't be as difficult to give everything their ideal or as close to ideal as possible spot in my home. So let's talk about how I am thinking about my decluttering process, how I decide which plants I'm going to be keeping and which plants I'm going to be figuring out a new home for, whether that be in the bin or going to someone else. So the first thing I think about is, am I neglecting the plant? Actually, this one looks so much better on camera than it does in real life. This is my philodendron torta. Okay, there you can see. It has so many little yellow bits and it has like spiderweb cobwebs all up in the plant because I am not paying attention to it. And if I'm not paying attention to it enough to make sure that it is staying in the best possible conditions and living its best life, then maybe it shouldn't be a plant that I am continuing to hang on to. And I know that's a difficult thing to say because I say that I love all my plants and to some extent I mean that because I do love my collection, but when it comes to individual plants, if it's like, do I need this plant? Will I miss it if it's gone? This one, I probably won't. And because I'm neglecting it so much, I should probably find a better home for it. And actually one of you put a really good comment in my goals video saying that you had recently decluttered and something that you were thinking about was if this plant got pests, like was infested with pests, would you save it? Like would you want to take the time to make sure that it was doing okay and it was able to be grown back to health and life? And if the answer was no, which for me in this tortum, it, it, it's, the answer is currently no. If that's the case, then you can figure out something else to do with them outside of your collection and find it potentially a better home. And sometimes this can be difficult. Like for me and this Thaumatophyllum Vipinati Fitum. This plant was given to me by Claire, one of my best friends. 
and like it, it holds some amount of sentimentality for me because of that but I'm not feeling like I'm in love with this plant anymore and that is such a difficult thing to tell myself because it does hold such sentimental value to me but I think we need to think about ourselves before anyone else and I have spoken to Claire about this one and asked if she would be upset if I got rid of it, if she would prefer that I give it back to her instead, and of course she's a very reasonable human being and was like absolutely no problem, you do you, it's your plant after all. If it's not working for you in your home, then go ahead and get rid of it. So I'm quite lucky in that. I know it can be a little bit more difficult if it's like family politics or if it's a plant that has other sentimental value to you, but oftentimes if it's just gonna keep bringing stress into your life even though it has some little bit of sentimentality it's probably better to get rid of it because you don't need that stress and the person who gave it to you as a present wouldn't want you to be having that stress and so it's just better to part ways with it instead of holding on for a sentimental reason another important question i ask myself is does this plant bring me joy anymore for me and this string of hearts the answer is no it doesn't add to my home in any sort of major aesthetic way it's not a sort of home decoration yeah it does live on top of this cabinet and provide something here but i could definitely put a different plant here and not feel like i'm losing out by losing this one i don't think anything will be missing in my collection if i don't have a string of hearts anymore and kind of within that i like to think about how difficult would it be for me to replace this plant if i were to get rid of it if the plant is something that's less common or maybe a little bit rare or something that just doesn't really occur in like the houseplant market where you're from it might be something to consider when getting rid of a plant because i know i can replace this one so fast if i decide down the line that i want to give string of hearts a go again or that i feel like i'm missing it from my collection i can get another one of these but if it was a plant that's a little bit more uncommon and i wasn't feeling as in love with it or it's not bringing me joy anymore it would be a slightly more complicated situation and I would probably think twice before just getting rid of it. If that's the case, I would probably try and revitalize my love for it. Maybe move the plant to a different spot to see if changing out its location is reviving it or bringing more to my home and I'm like enjoying it a little bit more so I can give it one more chance before deciding whether or not it's really providing me anything in the human plant relationship. The last question I asked myself is, is this plant causing me stress without giving much reward? So for me in this case, I have this code 69686 here and this one throughout my entire time of having it has just had so many pests. It's had thrips, it's had spider mites, pretty much the entire time I've had it. And it hasn't really produced all that great of growth for me and so, is it worth me continuing to have if it's not bringing me the joy and it's bringing me stress? Probably not. So I think this one is going to have to go somewhere else. Not sure where yet, but we will figure that out. Before I start selling things away, I like to figure out if there's any way that I can reduce the workload I have on my collection without getting rid of anything. And so there's a couple ways that I go about doing this. The first one is putting plants with similar care needs together into one pot. So I recently put together my Philodendron Brazil and my Cream Splash because I had been neglecting my Cream Splash but didn't totally want to get rid of it and I knew I had my Philodendron Brazil which they have essentially the same care needs. The Cream Splash might want a tiny bit more light but it can manage. They'll want the same sort of watering and things like that. So putting them together works really, really well. I could also put something like a heartleaf philodendron or a philodendron lemon lime into this pot as well and it would just continue growing as normal because they have essentially the same care needs. I do try and keep things within the genus. So even though an epibramnum and a philodendron heartleaf have fairly similar care needs, I wouldn't necessarily put them in the same pot because 
something about that scares me a little bit more and honestly even putting two different things like this in the same pot used to scare me before i think if i told my my plant parent self from five years ago that i'd be doing this they'd be like absolutely not that it, that's not no please don't but something in my mind has just changed and i feel like it's okay, it doesn't matter. You can put a Ficus Elastica Taniki and a Moonshine and a Burgundy all in the same pot and they will probably be just okay because you're gonna be giving them the same sort of care anyways. You may as well just have one plant instead of three. So I highly recommend doing something like that to help reduce your plant care needs. I'm also going to be joining duplicates within my collection because oftentimes I'm not benefiting from having more than one of the same plant throughout my home. I tend to not have that many duplicates but I definitely do for some and it's so much easier to just put them together and then you're like having the amount of plants that you have to take care of between those. I will say I'm not doing that for all of the duplicates I have, specifically my golden pothos, I do have two in my bedroom, one right here and one just in front of me, and they are both serving a purpose in my home. They are climbing along the beams, and so joining them together would not actually benefit me in any and actually hinder me a little bit because I'd have to find something to replace another one to do the job of trailing along the beam in my house so it doesn't make as much sense. But at the same time I have this satin pothos as well as one that is trailing along my ceiling and I am going to be putting this satin pothos into that one because I don't need this one just chilling sitting in my home on its own it's just sitting on a shelf. It doesn't have a purpose, whereas the other one does. So I'll join this one with that one and I can make that a fuller plant and even more of a feature. So now we gotta figure out what we're gonna be doing with all of these plants that we no longer want. And the first option, if the plant is quite far gone or like incredibly riddled with pests, bin it, put it in the bin, it's fine. It's okay to bin plants. If it's rotted, if it's infested, if it's nearly dead or would probably hold pretty much no value to somebody else, bin it. Put it in the trash. That is okay. I personally struggle with this or I go through periods where I struggle with it and sometimes I feel like I can just be brutal put it in the trash whereas other times I'm like no but it's a plant it has value and, but like I don't think it would actually have enough value for somebody else to like take the time to even even come get it from me for free so I'm like th those are the times when the plant should go in the pin and that is perfectly okay it's okay to throw plants away Really quick, before we get into the other ways of getting rid of plants, I want to say that if you are giving it to somebody else, whether you're selling it or giving it away, please, 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 please make sure you disclose if there are any existing problems such as pests. It is only fair to the person who's receiving the plant to be fully informed about what's going on with it so that they can make the decision about whether or not they want to be taking on that responsibility and that extra bit of care. It's okay if you say it's a rescue plant. It's okay to say this plant might have thrips. I have given plants to people before and said this plant might have thrips and they said that's cool no problem I'll deal with it. It's just really important to make sure that you're making them fully aware of what's going on and not just giving or selling plants to people with pests because that is an absolute no-no. If the plant is still savable, I then offer them to my friends first. I have several plant friends and I like to give them the opportunity before anyone else because then the plant kind of gets to stay in my care and I can like check up on it if I want to down the line. Of course, it's it's their plant once I've given it to them and they can do with it what they like, but it still feels like it's almost mine because I know who's looking after it and that it's got a good home. You can also always swap for a plant that you might want more. I know that doesn't really downsize your collection as much, but if you're swapping it for something that you know you want more and that you're really going to like and care for, it is infinitely worth it because you're getting rid of something that's not bringing you joy that's just bringing you stress that you're neglecting so it will automatically make your plant parenting easier by having a new plant that you like as opposed to one that you're not as fond of 
You can also sell your plants. I tend to sell them on Facebook Marketplace. I prefer to sell them locally if I can because that saves me having to pack them up and ship them out, which is a pain in the butt sometimes, especially if the plant is a little bit bigger or it's a not ideal time of year. Like now, it's winter. I don't necessarily want to be shipping plants because it can be quite cold in the UK. So having someone local come and collect it or meeting them up somewhere in town to drop it off, that is a much better option for me, typically. You can also find local plant lover Facebook groups where it's people in your area and you can post things on there saying, hey, I've got all these plants. Does anyone want any of them? Here are the prices, or even just here have them. And they will tend to get snapped up pretty fast. If you have some plants that are a little bit more on the pricey or uncommon side, you could go through something like eBay and have people bid on the plant, or even do bidding on Instagram. That's not my favorite place to do that, but it is possible and I feel like through Instagram you're going to be getting some people who are a little bit more of the collectors as opposed to just like a random person on Facebook who just thought a plant would be fun. So I find that it's a better place to sell things that are maybe a little bit less common, something that holds a little bit more value even if it is in a less than ideal state. So yeah, that's basically how I go about getting rid of houseplants, downsizing, decluttering, what goes through my mind through that process and how I get them out of my home. I am currently going through things and evaluating what plants that I would be happy to get rid of in my home. I am currently keeping a list on my phone of all of the things I would be okay with parting with. Some I'd be okay with giving away for free, some I would want some sort of something back because they have a little bit more value. But if you are in the UK and you're interested in any of these things here, give me a shout over on Instagram and maybe we can figure something out. I can figure out how to get these plants to you and I can get them out of my home because I'm seriously trying to make this a better situation for myself. It's gonna be a bit of a process and it's gonna be work, but I can make it happen and you can too if you want to. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to keep growing. Bye.